Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, welcome to uh, Dumb SEO Questions, episode 315. Uh, each week uh, we meet here to answer the questions asked on the uh, SEO Questions community on Google+, Plus, or at least for a short time left. And um, also the, the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight that we have Micah Fisher Kirshner. Micah is head of SEO for uh, Turn River Capital in, in the United States. He's based on the west coast of the U yeah west coast of the USA, uh, not far from Silicon Valley. Um, also moderator of an S big SEO, uh, SEO group. How's it going, mate? Going well. Still planning out our our. Uh year two, uh, hopefully our next one coming up in February. All right, and um, Tim Kapper is um, owner and CEO of onlineownership.com. Um, he's based in Corby, about 100 miles north of London uh, in the UK. Um, Tim is also a Google top contributor on the uh, Google My Business community, or Google product expert, I should say, on the Google My Business uh, community. And um, Masataki Wasa is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Masataki is uh, based in Wimbledon in London in the UK. Um, he hasn't left the, the European economic community yet. Um, but uh, Masataki can be found at wasaweb.net, Tim Kapper at onlineownership.com, and um, Micah doesn't want you to find him. <laughs> oh, do you, Mike? Mike? <laughs> All right. Okay, we have 10 questions tonight. Let's um, have a look at the first one. Um, uh, let me see. It's from Mark Johnston. I'll just click the right button here. Mark um, said, does anyone know of, of a uh, good um, citation building services that offer to create unique descriptions for each one, each one created? Uh, no, I don't even know if Whitespark offers that. Um, then they, they, they may do on their like premium things. Um, uh, I've never, I've never come across one that does, um, and I don't use them. I don't use citation. One of those things where a fiber gig might be the answer. Uh, no, because what, what he's asking is um, if they create uh, unique descriptions for every single every single one. Um, no, even Wide Spark at four dollars a listing doesn't offer you. Uh, doesn't offer individual descriptions, so no. Um, and if you are, you're going to be paying a lot. Right. No, I don't know of anyone that does. Okay. Well, let's um, call that uh, an answer and move on to number two on our run list. JL Faverio. Um, he said, what if the business name is in capitals? Uh, JL said, uh, I understand uh, name and address phone number details are critical, especially uh, um, it being exactly the same on all major aggregators. But what if the business name is sometimes in capitals and sometimes shown as um, first letter capitalization? Would that matter? I'm curious to hear 
your opinions? No, Google can figure out the difference between a name, whether it's in capitals or not. Yep. All right, let's go to number three on our run list. This one is from E. Dieter Martin. That's titled "A Need Opinions on a Content Randomizer." Um, he said, um, "Has anyone seen reviews for a content randomizer um, WordPress plugin by IntelliSoft? It creates content from randomly selected uh, paragraphs and serves it to site visitors. The text differs from uh, visit to visit." The idea seems ridiculous, and uh, who wouldn't agree with that? Um, he said, and I have to convince uh, a couple of clients uh, of that fact. Um, does anyone have any opinions or links on the matter? Uh, yeah, so this sounds like a, you know, <clears throat> a way to spin at least the way it's been put together, and this would not be anywhere worthwhile to be having from an SEO standpoint. Um, these are things that were done, gosh, 10 plus years ago uh, in the SEO world as kind of the easier and older ways of doing some black hat SEO. Um, so, yeah, unless this thing is meant to be like a lorem ipsum and kind of a stand-in for you to um, have you generate random commentary at certain points and, and it's in a blocked JavaScript file or something in those ways, even that's like like stuff that's done like looks pretty old too. So uh, yeah, I just get rid of the plugin. Would be my opinion. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, one rather bizarre question is, like, why would your clients, a couple of clients, be coming to you asking your opinion on, like, this? What are your clients reading? <laughs> it's like, where are they getting these ideas from? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, let's go to the next. This one from Dante J. J. Fanari. Um, it's titled The Best General Practice for Link Structure. Uh, Dante said, I asked a variation of this question previously, uh, but uh, I, I wanted to get a bit more detailed. What is the best general practice for link structure regarding a company that services multiple cities but is based out of one particular city? Um, for example, a general contractor that offers kitchen remodeling and bathroom remodeling based in San Antonio, Texas, but services San Antonio, Austin, Alamo, Heights, Halotes, etc. Um, and he gives a, a number of um, suggested link structures uh, which can be seen on the uh, dumb seo questions facebook group um i won't wait for them all to scroll through um guys i'll throw it open to you for your opinions I suppose another way of putting it, uh, he could have just asked, "What's what's a, a best way, uh, uh, a, a good link structure for um, um, uh, a Google My Business uh, listing?" Um, so the, 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 the look. So the point here is, you're asking about these, right? And to me, it's it, so the point here is you can either decide to do it by two ways. 
in the sense of the way you're, you're, you're showing those, as in the parent, you know, as in the structure, as in the silo, as in the parent, and then the, the next category, et cetera, or the next page within that. So are you on your site having your, uh, a location page or are you, are you having service pages or are you having both, right? So it would make more, you know, so for example, it would make more sense on a contractor to have a service page, what we do, right? So then you can go down, check what he does. Ah, kitchen remodeling, click onto that. And then you can still offer, you can still offer, check out the cities that we offer this in, or you, you may not offer in all of them. Um, but let's say he goes into the bathroom remodeling and it offers. So it all depends on how you're going to structure the site um, uh, and how you're going to present it to customers and how they can logically follow through. Right, I want a kitchen remodeling. Which area does, you, you know, which location uh, serves that? So before you start thinking which is the best, I would think, what, what is your structure already? Uh, without obviously looking at that, I can't particularly see it. But there's no particular one. But I would, I would, I would probably say service and then city, rather than city and service, because people don't typically search for a city and a service. They they searching for a service first, and then oh, can you do it in? So I would, out of just normal search behavior, I would say service, then your city. But you know you need to look at what you're already offering. What is the structure of the site? How have they structured it? Or is this starting from complete scratch? I don't know. But okay. Do do we have any uh, um, uh, any follow ups on that? All right. Let's go to the next. Thanks, Tim. Um, this one from Jason Knott. Um, SSL certificate installed, but browser still say it's insecure. Um, he said, I have an SSL certificate, but the web browsers still say my site is insecure. Um, how do I get it to be secured? If I type in HTTPS and, and uh, my domain, it comes up as secure. If I just type my domain name, it is insecure. Help, please. So I'm looking at the first comment to that as well. So, OK, so the first comment is in reference if <coughs> the domain is using HTTP only um, versus HTTPS. So um, I, I miss, it, that assumption is if uh, it's not a real SSL secure certificate issue. Um, if that's uh, the case, then you need to set up a 301 redirect depending on your backend system, most often commonly Apache or IIS um, or, or uh, Nginx. So depending on the system, that kind, that kind of thing will vary. If it's um, an SSL certificate issue, that's a whole other problem. You may have the wrong kind of certificate. Um, there's some over the past, gosh, over the past, I feel like two years now that something's bro uh, been, what's the word, uh, not legit or got has, has uh, failed in their security and so it's been removed and then there's that possibility. Um, Otherwise, maybe there's just something that's been improperly set up. Uh, could be that you've got images on the page uh, uh, or other links and not links um, resources that you're linking to that are not um, secure. So, kind of uh, just kind of something to note in that um, a whole page has to have everything be HTTPS for even the browser to say everything is secure. So. Um, without kind of some of the more details and reading through the comments and details, those are at least three things off the top of my head that I can take up for why, yeah, there might be an issue on the 
um, page slash site saying that it's unsecure. I have to point out, oh, excuse me. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, I have to point out uh, people like Michael Martinez, um, and uh, I also see um, Daniel Fonda um, uh, chipping in on this one. Um, um, yeah, that looked at the. Um, help uh, that people give through the week when as people are ask these questions that the answers that are um, put on to the dumb SEO questions Facebook group uh, are invaluable and, and we are truly grateful um, yeah I, I think you've covered it Micah um, we'll move on uh, to the next all right this one from Jason Hyang Chul Kang. It's titled Disallowing Images. He said, when I did a, a site operator search on uh, my site uh, on Google, there are a bunch of pages that just show individual images. And all of these URLs appear to be structured uh, like, and, and he gives an example uh, about hyphen page slash 270 by 232 underscore logo 3, etc., etc. He said, I have a bunch of these pages uh, showing up. He really means to say a bunch of these URLs for images, um, which just shows an image or logo. Can I disallow uh, all of these URLs in my robots text? How do I get rid of these pages? Um, so, uh, did he say he was using Yoast, like Lisa mentioned? Um, I don't know. Uh, so if you're using Yoast, um, as, as Lisa mentioned, go into, you know, the, the Yoast thing and there's such appearance and your very top line, your very first one you said is media, or maybe it's general then media, hit the media and then select the, um, and select the yes. Uh, I can't remember what it particularly says. What that means is that it um, it doesn't separate the image from where you've used it, um, so that it's indexed individually in in search. Um, so yeah, I mean, trying to trying to use robots txt to 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 stop all of that would just be um well depending i mean yeah I, I probably wouldn't do that um in the all-in-one seo plugin i'm not sure where they do it um but certainly with yoast it's in the it's in the search parents media section you just tick tick select and then it prevents it from being indexed individually um, um all in one, I'm not entirely sure. You'll have to just check on what you're using. Um, but Robust TXT is going to be a bit of a, yeah, you know. Yeah. And why would you want to disallow Yeah. in the first place? I mean, I, now I can see certain reasons, but you don't want certain images to be indexed at all. Yeah. Yeah. Show up in the image search results. That's fine. You know, I can see the, why that might be the case. But in this case, it's you know it's about logos and things like that, which yeah. you know you, I don't think you want to disallow your logo from being indexed. Thanks, Mr. Taki. You're you're exactly spot on. Um, look, we're losing Micah Fisher Kirshner. He has to head off for a meeting. Thank you, Micah. We better soldier on to num number seven on our run list because we're just about to lose Tim Capper too. Um, all right, let's uh, go to this one from Kestudis Baranoskis. Uh, it's an IP-based ban. He said, hello to everyone. 
I have a really dumb question, but I can't find a 100% answer anywhere else. Um, so I had a big YouTube channel. I was making money from AdSense, but Google decided to ban my AdSense and my channel forever. Now I have a vision to start a new web business, uh, and I wanted to make SEO for my website by myself. If it will be okay and if it will not affect my website search results, uh, if I use the same laptop and IP to optimize my website, create content, and turn on Google Analytics if my AdSense and YouTube is banned. I don't want to work and later find out that Google is putting my search results lower because of my IP uh, is still associated with my website and Google Analytics. Maybe some, someone knows the right answer. Thanks, guys. Um, Michael Martinez responded to this question, and I agree with him. Um, this YouTube and AdSense teams operate independently of the web search team, so it should be okay. Um, so long as analytics is concerned and web search is concerned, I don't think having a, a terminated AdSense account or YouTube channel would matter. Thank you, Mr. Taki. And I should point out for uh, Kestudis' uh, benefit that Masataki is a Google product expert on the uh, Google AdSense uh, community. All right, let's go to the next. This one from Job and John, uh, who needs an action plan on this local map pack scenario. Jobin said, uh, hi, SEO pros. I need an action plan on this local map pack scenario. I have a new client who wants my help with ranking in the Google map pack. He stated that they were in the top three, and just last month, their Google My Business listing was suspended. They used a virtual address. I know uh, this was a dumb move, especially when... Uh, um, Google has been working on cleaning up the maps as shared uh, by Tim Kappa. However, they removed their address and submitted the listing for review and it was reinstated by Google, but they lost the map pack rankings and also all of their reviews were deleted. They waited for a month to see uh, if um, it, the ranking improved, but nothing happened. So they sent... Uh, emails uh, to clients to leave reviews and got a few reviews but still not ranking. I checked on their citation score and it was above 80% on Moz. Who cares? Um, and also on Yext, all info is perfect on the Google My Business listing as in images, posts, info, category, etc. They uh, do appear uh, in the map on position 8 um, for the search term, but that money pack spot is gone. So um, at this uh, stage, I'm a little stumped on what the strategy should be to get them back in the map, map pack. <coughs> so one thing I, I, I asked, and I wasn't entirely sure, was, look, um, so this was a virtual, <laughs> yeah, you're not allowed to use it. I get why I was suspended. But what I don't get is if they switch to service area business and then it was allowed back in um that doesn't quite sound right um because you were suspended and then you you would naturally have to contact support um support i don't see support going yeah okay that's fine just because you're still using a virtual address um but anyway uh so i did question that and you didn't uh, didn't exactly come back on that, um, which it, it shouldn't have done. So th that, that's why. But then you said you you checked the you you checked the the naps, which I'm assuming. Well, so secondly, I don't understand how you could have checked the nap in that sense, because what address were you checking um, when now that it's a service area business, it doesn't display an address. Um, So, so what actual address was used? Was it still the same one 
but now that they're a service area business, was it still the same one? Because Google obviously kind of understands w where it was. Um, uh, it, but it would have made sense if they had actually changed the address to get it reinstated um, from a virtual to a different address. Uh, that would have made sense, and that would have explained the drop. You know, I don't, I don't see a, a, a drop. Yes, if you were suspended, but then you come back as a service area business. Ordinarily, you don't see a drop in positions. <laughs> I wouldn't also expect your nap and citations to make any huge difference. Um, you know, yes, they're important, but as a ranking factor, they pretty much nothing. Um, you know, because just citations are shite. Um, so there's there's a, there's a couple of things there. Also, um, updating your structured data to because now that you technically don't have uh, you, you know, you're a serviced area business, you don't actually meet people at a location. Um, you know, yeah, you could have the address in it, in the structured data, but, you know, in theory, you're actually servicing people. So I would be looking at including your actual centroid, you know, your geo midpoint, and then creating a radius that you serve customers around. I'd be looking at that also. Um, but if something's dropped like that, I would certainly question the address and uh, my big still thing that you haven't answered and in the back of my mind is well what address did they use then to get it reinstated because they shouldn't have reinstated it still on a virtual office address so that's my big question I think something's changed there slightly and then of course where did they put the map pin and what 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 service area did they select did they select you know, um, like in the service area business, did they select just that city or the town or did they select a service area radius? How big was the radius? I mean, like there's quite a lot of things they could have done rather than just suspended and reinstated. There's, there's, yeah, there's quite a lot of issues there or potential issues rather. Thank you, Tim. All right, um, I think that's a, a great answer for Job and John. We thank him for his interest. Here's the next one from JLo on where should we put the anchor tag for a button? Uh, we know that for an internal link, it's better to put the relevant anchor text. However, if we do this for a button and nest an anchor tag, it will only be clickable on in the text part. So is it a good idea to nest the whole button in an anchor tag? Um, how do we make sure that we still follow the, the relevant anchor text best practice? Um, is using the uh, A symbol directly and style them as a button instead of using button tag the best practice? I don't think I've ever used a button tag in my whole life. Um, let me know your thoughts. Thank you. We thank Lisa Brown for her uh, uh, response. Uh, she said, that nesting a button inside an anchor won't validate. Use uh, and style accordingly. I don't see the sense in using a, a button for an internal link. Well, uh, if the button's going to another page, you know, it'll say read more, click here, etc. Uh, but they've probably said view this chair. And then yeah. they've had a button, you know, obviously they didn't didn't have one in the CSS or one wasn't created. So they trying to obviously style it with a in, with, with a button. I mean, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. All right, well, 
Let's um, go to the next. I think it's our last question. We just made it before Tim Kappa has to leave us, uh, or at least um, if the MSEA question server responds. Uh, this is on, uh, it's titled uh, Article Directory Submissions. It's from Anum Shaf. And um, Anum's obviously uh, a very uh, per um, perceptive person. He said, hi, SEO gurus. Uh, he said, I need some help, but what are the best websites? Well, let's see, he's got his copybook already. Uh, he said, uh, I need some help. What are the best websites for article directory submissions? <laughs> um, Anum? Right. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know where, like, like this stuff hasn't been happening for the last, Jesus, when did Penguin come out? Six years ago? Five, no, 10, I don't know. Cry, I can't even remember. Look, this, this just, no, I don't know what you've been reading, but you need to re-educate yourself, okay? Article directory submissions, um, uh, no matter, no matter how great a piece of content you create, it's just not good purely because of um you know the the company it keeps okay um equally these are on google's radar i would like you to you know after when you listen to this or whatever or whatever just uh, search for um google webmaster guidelines on links right and then read that educate yourself on that um then start educating yourself a bit more in terms of um how to you know is this for a local business is this for a multinational business um just start looking at different things you do not want to go down the road of directory submissions um you know you need to you need to concentrate one on the content on your own site if you're going to be creating brilliant content, put it on your site. Um, and then if you want to start thinking in terms of links, you want to start actually having great sites which are relevant to you, uh, linking back to you. And there are different ways of doing this, but you know, most good sites don't accept articles. You generally would have to pitch an article or um, create some really good stuff on your site that because they're in the same niche, then they get hold of you and they either want to do an interview or do a collaboration on something, you know, so, but there has to be the measure of quality somewhere. It has to be a measure of quality somewhere, um, for you to actually start, um, having people contact you in terms of, Hi, would you know? Would you be interested in 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 in? We'd like you to expand on this um, subject on our site, and you know, then you start looking at it, or you start pitching them, you know, with with different things. There has to be a measure of quality somewhere, um, and especially for whatever you're doing, whether it be customers, B two B, or whatever the particular type of um, of site you're running. You know, even if it's an affiliate site or something like that, you know, there has to be some form of measure of quality for search engines to go, you know what, this guy, this guy, you know, um, th this site is, is, is well written. It, um, you know, it's well written. It creates some really great stuff about whatever it is. Um, and therefore, you know, we feel it should be positioned here. Um, and and you know as interaction grows your audience grows things start progressing just don't go down the road of article directory submissions um penguin days are over um so in the sense that uh you don't actually have like a manual penalty slapped out but actually you still do i know i think that the last one i saw when someone published one was last year online um, but the penguin ones where they just literally, you know, slap you, they were throwing out manual penalties are over. Um, what Google tends to do now is they understand who these directory sites are. 
and then they just ignore any links coming from them. So essentially, you could be sitting for the next five years, you know, uh, whether you, you're creating the article, you know, whether whatever, you're spending hours um, creating this, or whether you're just getting the article from Fiverr that still costs you a Fiverr, then you still go to the, you know, the, the, the directory, um, and then you still got to, you know, chuck it in there. You know, in the space of a couple of years, you know, you've already spent a couple of thousands. So, for, and for what? For it to be ignored. So the, the point here is just understand what you're doing. It's it, it just don't go down that road. Rather spend, if you're going to spend money, rather get a proper writer uh, for your site. Um, or if it's you doing the writing, uh, rather spend your time looking for, you know, for your own site, as well as what other similar sites are writing themselves uh, in your same niche and seeing if you can collaborate, seeing if you can, um, seeing, seeing how you can, you, 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 you know, you can mix and match. And there's also, you know, there's also a bit of baiting involved in the sense that, you know, you're someone else in the industry that might be in another country, they may offer the same kind of service, product, whatever. Um, <clears throat> they write an article on a particular feature of a product or, or subject and you look at it right it's brilliant because these guys are great and then you think ah oh, you know what they missed something there and then you could go and expand on that bit you missed but then you know tell the reader right you know like check out the check out this equally great article from so and so and you link out to them but then of course when you share socially mention them so then they're going to see like oh you know what yeah yeah this guy's also quite great and and you know then you start developing that professional level between the same kind of subjects or or uh, you know the whether it be b2b you know you, you you start putting yourself on their playing field and you start being noticed for what you should be you start going down this direction article directory submissions next minute you're going to be asking about bookmarking christ that died like 20 years ago okay um uh, and you start going down a low quality path, which just, you know, wastes time, money. It does zero for you. Um, and depending on how prolific you are, you may even still end up with a manual penalty at the end of it. Um, so, yeah, look, just do yourself a favor. I think you need to stop reading what you've been reading for you to have asked this question and start reading some uh, better quality uh, information out there. That's the, the, the Vex question. By the way, great answer, Tim. Thank you very much. But um, how, how does someone judge the value of content? You know, um, I suppose we could say um, just um, follow recommendations in dumb SEO questions. <laughs> yeah, look, it's it's not about like the quality of it. It's you know every site, whether you know even the big name ones, you're going to have um, you're going to have some some in depth stuff. Then you're going to have some quick updates posted. Um, uh, you know, you're going to have, it's going to vary. And it's not necessarily about the quality of that particular article. It's about the, when you say quality, it's are people engaged? Do they regularly come back to the site? Um, are people commenting on it? Um, you know, there's, there's an all measure. Do people actually click through to a different page in the site? Um, or if, an, if another article has been mentioned in it? You know, so in other words, does it engage or does it serve its intended purpose in, in that sense it's like when when people say quality it's not necessarily oh right this was written by some you know genius author as opposed to someone else you know um it, it's not necessarily about that yes it needs to be grammatically correct etc and if you're talking about something that is 
you know, if you're talking about the latest development in brain surgery, you know, you would at least expect the author to have um, some form of years of experience in medical writing or uh, be a qualified doctor themselves or etc. You know, that's what it's about now. Um, not necessarily just the actual quality of a piece of writing. Thank you, Tim. Right, um, I see we've just been joined by David Roseanne from the sunny south of uh, West Sussex in the UK. That's about mm -hmm. the size of it. We don't have any more questions to answer, though. I don't think anyway. That, just let me. That, that let me was, yeah, that was very bad timing on my part. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, I'll just check this link. Yep. That is it. Uh, we have uh, answered all of the questions asked on the SEO questions community on Google Plus and the dumb uh, SEO questions uh, uh, Facebook group. We'll be back uh, at the same time next week um, to do this uh, all again. Uh, I, before I go, though, I must thank you for your interest in uh, what we do because uh, uh, your uh, participation makes what we do worthwhile. We thank you uh, most sincerely for that. All right. Um, until next week, it's uh, good night.